Hello and welcome back to my RTS controls tutorial series. In the previous video we demoed what we'd be building and in this video we're just going to be setting up the unity scene. So I just have a blank default scene over here and uh, we'll just start by making the ground. So we'll go 3D object plane, call it ground. We'll just zero it out on the position scale and then scale it on the X, Y, and Z axis. <clears throat> and we'll probably just apply a material to this. So we'll go assets, create new folder, maybe material or materials, because we might have more in here. And in this folder, we'll just create material. Um, call it ground, and we'll just throw it into the ground. And uh, I guess we'll go for a brown color. You can go whatever you want. I think in this tutorial, I'll just do a nice dark brown. Uh, so that's looking good in the in the editor here. Uh, so the next thing is we'll just add some units. So I'll go 3D object cube. <laughs> we'll just name it player unit. And we'll zero that one out as well. For the main camera, um, we want to set it to orthographic perspective. Uh, this allow this doesn't this eliminates that perspective distortion that you generally get. Um, generally good for isometric games. Uh, we'll expand the size to 11 to capture more of the input. And for the position, uh, since I did this ahead of time, I know it's 12, 9, negative 17 for the position. And for the rotation, it'll be 28, 13. 13 and 0 uh, and so that's that's looking a lot better let's move the player out player unit up a little bit 0 0.5 so it's above and um, we're gonna go ahead and save the player unit as a prefab um, this will come in handy later on when we want to save the changes we make so I'll just make a folder called prefabs and I'll drag that player unit into the prefabs folder and you can see the player unit turn blue over here. Uh, so when we duplicate this, you can right click duplicate or just control D. Uh, I'll do that twice and just kind of drag around these guys a little bit uh, to position them. Uh, so one of the nice things about having the a prefab is let's make a material for our player unit. We go material player unit mat and we'll just We'll go with maybe yellow, get something yellow, and we throw it on our player unit. You can see only one got colored, but if we select apply, all of them gets colored. And so that's kind of useful when you're quickly prototyping or you don't want to make the same changes and reduplicate and all that kind of stuff. So we only have two more things to do. Um, we want to add a highlight prefab to this player unit, so we'll just right click 3D object and we'll choose a sphere this time and um, you can see that was a little bit underneath um, so we'll scale it 2 2 2 and we'll flatten it on we'll actually flatten it on the y-axis to 0 0.1 uh, and so this is going to be the highlighting so we'll just name this highlight and we'll drag it right below like that and we'll make another material, create material highlight mat, and we'll choose a, a bright green for this. Bright green. And with the prefab, click apply, and all, all of them will get that, which is really useful. Um, while we're at it, let's just name ground mat, keep it consistent. And now that we all have it, we want to deactivate the highlight and apply. Uh, the reason being is we obviously don't want to highlight them until we've clicked them. And generally, this is the easiest way is just to deactivate them through this. Um, and over here, it'll be saved, all those changes, so you don't have to worry about propagating those changes. And the final thing we have to do is... A nav mesh. Um, we just need to apply nav mesh to our plane object. Um, it's pretty easy. All you have to go is to Window AI Navigation. 
this is going to pop up a little navigation. Um, all you have to click is navigation static. Um, and then you go to bake, click bake, save scene. It's asking us to save the scene, so we'll just do uh, RTS scene. We'll just click it in there for that for now. I think I'll let us bake. And as you can see in our editor, when we show the nav mesh, we can see that the plane got calculated and we now have a walkable nav mesh. This will come in handy when we apply nav mesh agents to our our units and that'll allow us to let them walk around and move all on their own. So I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.